Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here in Las Vegas as part of SuperCloud 5. Savannah and Lisa are live in our Palo Alto studio. We got Rob and Rebecca coming in from Barcelona. Well, it's late in Barcelona, but they're probably still up drinking sangria. And we're here in the Emerald Lounge inside the Mongo Hang Space. I'm really excited to have Ravi Damaravan, who is the founder and CEO of Exfluence, Exa, Exafluence, Exafluence, Exa, big. We're talking big data, we're talking AI. Ravi, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on here at reInvent. Thanks, thanks for having me. So I'd like to ask anybody with a founder in the name, why'd you start the company? I was, um, I was having the role of a data and an analytics practice leader for several uh, system integrator firms. I was also responsible for building platforms and solutions that solve problems. I found that in the healthcare space, there are quite a bit of problems that can be solved with uh, data and analytics, that's what uh, got me into starting the company. So healthcare is really hard. Not only is everything stovepiped, but you have such uh, strict privacy requirements. So what, what gave you the, the confidence to take on that challenge? I, I, I can firmly believe that the market to handle the privacy has quite a bit improved, primarily because of the hyperscalers and the cloud providers and the likes of MongoDB giving higher emphasis on security. What we do is we make sure that we give highest priority to the PII data that gets anonymized and it has various level of encryption and security that we enforce. And it's very hard to get data either in rest or in motion to anybody to get it. And we have multiple controls audit practices in place to make sure that it is uh, something that doesn't get into uh, into other's hands. So with the advent of, with the technology evolving regarding the security and others, we feel confident to handle that part of the problem. Where we see opportunity is also that there is a quite a bit of problems that disjointed healthcare systems don't talk to each other and there was an opportunity for us to really solve the problem. So talk a little bit more about the problem that you solve. Are you bringing in disparate data so that I can do analysis or take action on that? What, what are you doing that's, that's unique, that, that, that was white space problem that you had to solve? So what happened was when uh, a typical payer system or a clinical provider system, the data stays in a very validated environment with a lot of governance and controls that only certain segment of people will be having access to and all. With the, with the formation of the data lake and the ability to bring data from different sources, for example, we bring data from different claim systems, different authorization systems, different medical care management systems, we are able to identify the patient profile because of the master data management concepts that can be applied in MongoDB. We are able to create a longitudinal view of a patient, get the patient data, and do various level of analytics on them. We do analytics to the level of doing the risk score assessment, looking at their disease methods, population health. We look at overall what impacts them in their care, care gap mechanism. So wait, so you're building an analytics application on top of Mongo. Correct. Okay, explain why you would use Mongo for that and not like a data warehouse, like a Redshift or a Snowflake or a Databricks. Very good question. The reason why we used Mongo is one, the number one factor is that Mongo is the only platform that allows you to build lightweight master data management concept. For example, if you look at it, patient data can come from 30 systems, but I need to know which system is the system of record. To do that, I don't need to invest into large master data management products, I can leverage Mongo. In addition to that, the delivery mechanism of the data it can be di distributed on a mobile, on a cloud, and it can be built as a native app. And I am reducing my total cost of it to be very centric towards one system being there. In addition, what, uh, what really got us into using Mongo was the time series type of data that comes from device manufacturers that needs to be looked into from a time series aspect. And the ability for writing machine learning programs in an open way when we built the platform, we also saw the emergence of fire interoperability becoming the de facto standard, which is primarily supported in a JSON format. So we saw that the value of Mongo being JSON-centric 
to be the prime factor. And it's just so easy for developers exactly. to take advantage of it, so you can focus on, on the work that you have to do. Are you confined to healthcare? I mean, it seems like there would be some other industries where there's disparity, like even in financial services, data's all over the place. Um, do, you, do you apply this technology to other services, other we industries? We did apply to financial services too. Financial services, uh, we, are, we have partnered with FIS to jointly take our platform to asset side management in the, in the markets. So we have master data management that is built on Mongo for financial services, but majority of the company is focused on healthcare. Well, so okay, so we've got to ask about AI. I mean, there's so many use cases potentially for AI and healthcare. Um, which ones are, are you contemplating or, or tackling? We already started building some of those. Where it started was we had a fire platform which required mapping of data sources. We saw that generative AI, a right fitment to do mapping easily without having to build business analysts to do that. And uh, at least it can help business analysts to make that uh, uh, transition faster. We also saw that there is an opportunity for doing this with clinical trial process, with the protocol mapping. For patient recruitment, patient research and studies, we saw that generative AI, we built our own LLM models and the ability for using Mongo's vector database to refine our models was wonderful. So we built a model for uh, clinical trial protocol. We are also working in the specialty chemical industry to find out new molecular research to figure out how the molecules are formed with easiest route manufacturing methods. And we were able to do that for a couple of clients in the pharma industry, that they, their ability to do the for total manufacturing of the molecule, if it takes six to eight months to research that, we were able to reduce it to three to four months using generative AI methods. Wow, okay, so that's real productivity driver. But you, you say you built your own LLM? We will tell Why did you build your own LLM as opposed to use, not using like an open source or a Anthropic or a Llama 2 or a you know, something that you could get from, from Amazon. Customers had some kind of uh, inhibition because it is, warm. We, when the LLMs are a lot of IP level data that resides, they want the language learning model not to do any public routes into internet or any other place. So they want to confine it to their own environment within the thing. In the space we work in, especially in the pharma industry and research and chemical industry, there are a lot of documents that are proprietary and uh, tribal knowledge to the system that right. they work with, so it can't get out of it. So we took a model, we open source model, configured it into their environment and made a proprietary LLM for them. Ah, okay, so you started with open source, obviously. Yeah, open source, yes. Yeah, Did you share what you, you used? Was it Falcon or? or? We used Falcon, we, yeah. used, uh, we used a couple of more Python-based models that we configured. And then, in. then shaped that for your shared own needs. For, yes. And now, now you're, and you're doing that uh, in a very specific use case for, for healthcare, so it's a domain specific model, is that we right? We are, uh, as an organization, we are very focused on domains. We believe that the problems can be solved by understanding the systems as well as the problem statement in a peculiar way. So the way we are working is uh, solving the problems in the healthcare and uh, payer and provider space. Does that work happen in the cloud or does it happen on-prem? It happens in the cloud. We work on Atlas, we work on all the three clouds. Primarily AWS, GCP are the primary ones. Do you, do you have customers that say, we don't want to do it in the cloud, we want to do it on-prem? There are many. And, and can you help them? Yes, we do, because all our mechanism of the LLM models and all are Kubernetes and Docker deployable, which is in a DevOps mode. So we can bring it into an environment into MongoDB enterprise server or MongoDB, you know, MongoDB custom and bring it on on-prem. For the customers that have not embraced the cloud strategy, we still do the on-site deployment. And it's relatively small. I mean, it's not a trillion parameters, right? Correct. I mean, it's, it's relatively small. But, but still, how did you train it? You, you, you got access to cloud GPUs and we have it, the or? access to cloud GPUs, but uh, the kind, kind of parameters and the configuration settings are evolving. The more they are using, we have to increase the GPUs and consumption, but the customers are happy with it because they are able to reduce the research time and increase the productivity of it. I feel like during COVID, all we talked about was COVID, and now all we talk about is Gen AI. Do, do you feel like that's appropriate? Has it, has it affected your strategy in a way 
that, I mean, just mentioned some productivity metrics that were very impressive. Do you feel like we're over-rotating on this, or is it, or maybe we're under-rotating, that the potential is there that we should really be leaning into this conversation and affecting our strategies dramatically? When Gen AI came in, I was a little skeptic about the ROI that it would yeah. generate, but when you are tuning it for a right use case and for a right level of uh, cost controls that you have, there is a value to it. For example, there are organizations that did it for service request uh, automation, which reduced their overall cost of using the teams, but there are, uh, there are places where research documents, especially the PDFs and the generative information that takes whole lot of manual effort to extract, you can use generative AI in a simplified way. Without having to overdo it, you can control the configuration, compute, infrastructure and all, define your ROI criteria and use it very in intelligently, but if you overdo the hyper parameters and do a lot more of uh, unrelated uh, usage, then it may end up into more cost spend. And you were early into building this LLM, so you must have been using a vector database before That's Mongo exactly. announced its vector search. Have you migrated over to Mongo vector we search? Have, we have, we are the early ones who took the val, because Mongo vector search and Mongo vector database allows you to confine the research to fragment and refine your research in terms of what you want the output to be. So we are able to pass more information, we are able to train more data that is relevant and leverage the usage of the value of the vector database in a big way. And you determined there was no need to have a separate uh, a vector database infrastructure, that the advantages of, of, of consolidating that in Mongo, there weren't, were there trade-offs that, that, that you lost as, because you didn't have the dedicated vector database, or no? There, there was a trade-off uh, when vector database of Mongo was not there, but uh, I kind of feel that when we were always using Mongo for all the aspects, so we started uh, naturally using it in the, uh, as an extension because we want the total cost of ownership to be minimal. What do you want from, if, if you could write a wish list, Dev Itacheri is sitting here and said, Dave, what is it that you would ask him to do that would make your life better? I kind of feel that the ability of um, more machine learning models being available to use the data in a data friendly environment and the ability to the ability to be uh, translating even image related DICOM to non-DICOM. We are able to read the metadata and all but there is an aspect of uh, confinement and other things that you could do for more unstructured data. That would be one ask. The second one is probably having much more proprietary frameworks of language learning model that we don't need to use uh, more public APIs. Uh, having Mongo own centric data APIs would be a- More consolidation into consolidation the platform, more there. value in the platform. What about the cloud vendors? If you had all three cloud vendors in, in front of you, you said you're running on all clouds. What would you ask them for? The, the cloud vendors are giving their own refinement of their models and again the model outcomes are not, when I run it on, uh, Google's to AWS to um, Microsoft, the outcomes are completely different. Consolidating it and looking at it with what outcomes OpenAI would give, the confidence level and the degree of um, degree of valued data that comes out of it would be the ask, like how much of it is trust, how much is bias built, how much of non-bias is built in. That transparency would be helpful. Did your customers, did the A open AI governance meltdown and the firing and rehiring and all the drama, did, did that cause concern amongst your customers? The customers were always open for, for a simple information search, they were okay with using OpenAI kind of a framework, but when it came to their own proprietary data, they were confined in asking what, where it would reside and where the IP would reside. So we went with the proprietary LLMs. That's what our experience. So you didn't have to worry about been. that. Yeah. Right, right. Because you had that. You had that fenced that off. Part of it. The, you're the LLM vendor, so Correct. you you don't you don't. I presumably you. Well, let's see. I guess you do have you, you have access to the metadata. Correct. But you don't have access to the data. Data itself, we don't have the access. Right. And Mongo is an investor in your yes, company. Yes. That's right? correct. What's next for you guys? We are working, uh, we are growing on a 100% growth rate, we are working on the industry. We are, we are focusing our research, we started with payer and provider, now we are extending it to clinical trials and pharma, that's the nest for us. We see there is an intersection of patient uh, engagement in all the micro verticals in healthcare. I think that's where we want to get our yeah, nice. 
Robbie, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Really appreciate it. It's, thank and, you very and much. And best of luck to you and the company. Thank you very much. All right, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante. John Furrier's in the house as well. He's actually upstairs now doing other interviews uh, on the third floor here at AWS reInvent. This is SuperCloud 5, and we'll be right back right after this short break.